Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. This is Pastor E. Bringing you greetings from the Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, located in 2808 Grand Street in the city of North Virginia. Well, once again, we thank Yahweh for this. Another opportunity to come into your homes and your cars and your jobs and wherever you might be. Thank Yahweh for this day. For this is the day that He's made and we're going to rejoice and be glad. The psalmist said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of Yahweh. Another week Yahweh has brought us through. We have so much to give him praise for. For he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. For we had 10,000 tons, we've been praised in them. For all that he's done and for all that he's going to do. We thank him for our last night's sleep, early rise this morning, and the blood still running on in our veins. So much to give him praise for. Hallelujah. Lord, as we prepare ourselves to approach the throne, a favor today on that practice. We have the Green family. Brother Robert Van Green. Brother Sean Johnson of North Carolina. Brother Larry Parker and Sister Doris Parker. Brother Leon Anthony Woodbury Senior, Richard Virginia. Brother Damalola and Sister Roseanne of Los Angeles, California. Sister Sherry Jackson of Chicago, Illinois. Sister Cecilia West. Sister Susie West. Sister Deborah and Brother George Butler and Brother George Butler Jr. Mother Florence Graham, Richard Virginia. Dickon Joseph Otis, Sr. of North Virginia. Sister Henrietta Benjamin. Sister Mary Francis Austin of North Carolina. Sister Maddie and Brother Henry Azell of Mississippi. Sister Jordan Van Simon of New York. Sister Sherry Jackson of New York. Sister Mary Jackson of New York. Sister Diane Bowie of New York. Brother Darrell Bowie. Sister Connie Wayne, Brother Brian K. Sullivan of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Sister Bertha Morris, Sister Bernice Lovelace, Sister Margaret Woodbury, Brother Ozzie Belcher, Brother Robert Childs, Brother Louis Smithers, Brother Leslie Anderson, to the Taylor family today, our hearts go out to you in the passing of your father, Brother Albert Taylor Sr. We pray for you today. Hallelujah. The Assembly of Yahweh, King William County, Pastor Joseph Sims, and the Assembly family. The Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Richard Virginia, Pastor Bishop of the Jehovah. And the assembly family, we pray for you. Brother Dennis Terrence Sr., we pray for you. Brother Elisha Butler, being deployed to Iraq, we pray for you, for your family, for the Butler family, we pray for you. God will strengthen, give us protection. Father Yahweh, we thank you. This is the day you made. We're going to rejoice and be glad. We praise you right now for your goodness, for your kindness, and for the multitudes of your tender compassion. For Yahweh, we realize there's none like you. It is in you that we live, we move, and we have our existence. We realize today all power is in your mighty hand. Father, we come today boldly to the throne to obtain help in the time of need, asking that you will look down upon your children. Touch each name, each one. 
brought before your throne today. Touch them from your crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Sit right there, Yahweh. The spirit of Rafina upon those, Yahweh, that need you. For Father, you declare in your word, Behold, I am the mighty one of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Today, Father, we call upon you right now, knowing you to be adopted in the double observation. We call upon you right now, Yahweh, knowing you to be a lawyer who never lost the case. We talk and we move, we sing and we shout. But Father, it is in you that our victory is found. Father, today we thank you for how you have manifested your presence, even in the course of this week that we've just come through. Thank you, Yahweh, for how you opened doors that were closed, how you made ways out of nowhere. Thank you! Hallelujah, Yahweh, how you reached down and protect us and kept us through all hurt, harm, and danger. All the danger is our ways. Yahweh, you reached down, your family of love, your arms of protection. You kept us. You protected us. You looked over us, over our children. We thank you and we praise you today for what you've done and for what you're going to do. Father, today, touch those right now, beds of affliction. Those right now, Father, who are going through all Yahweh, all manners of sickness. Father, we know right now all manners of disease is in your right hand, Father. We know that nothing is too hard for you. Send the spirit of a people right now. Y'all you be the one that healeth all manner of diseases. And right now, Father, touch the bodies of those who are going through. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. Y'all be those who are of the ark of Satan, who don't know you in the pond of their sin. Save right now, Father, before it's everlasting too late. Y'all be those right now, y'all, who are slowful and indifferent. Y'all be those who are rebellious spirits. Y'all be awakened right now, chest high. Y'all will chase them back to you. Oh, y'all will give me a run and cry. What shall I do to be saved? Today, Father, move by your power. Move by your spirit. Here right now, God, we call upon you in the day of trouble. Father, this evil day in which we're living, look down upon this world right now. Y'all will touch our knees. Oh, y'all will touch this world. Y'all will touch right now the situations going on in this world. Y'all will that little boy, that one little girl right now. Yahweh with the mind to want to take that life. Move right now. Intervene right now, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, as we come today, as we remember this day as often, that your son came and died that we might have a right to the tree of life. Today, as we come, Yahweh, to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior through our remembrance of communion. Be with us today. Be with us today, Yahweh, in this sermon. Open the eyes of our understanding. They may be enlightened according to the corrective word of the truth. Now we continue to open our understanding. Continue to enlighten our hearts and our minds. Now we say, will they move, Yahweh? And be in the place where you have ordered our steps in your word. Today, the bell of your servant. Touch right there. Move by your power, by your spirit. For there is none like you. Not like you. And give us that peace. Hallelujah. The past is all in the same. These men of the rock, as we ask in the precious name of your son, as you are the shield, we give you praise and honor for ever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a peace of God, Lord. Though our hearts and flesh be
praise you when you sing. Give him your praise. Give him your thanksgiving. Let him know how much you love him, how much you adore him, how much you thank him for what he's done. When he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So much to give him praise for today. So much to give him thanks for today. Ways he's made, doors he's opened. Thank you, Father, for the, for the provisions. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for looking down upon our families, keeping and protecting us, our going out, our coming in, keeping food on our tables, roof over our head, rain on our bodies. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you.
Your brothers and sisters, we all know what you're dealing with and what you're going through. May Yahweh give you strength. May He give you confidence. May He hold you with the protection of His loving arms. May you find peace in the days ahead and be sure on the sheep. Just remember heaven. Heaven can hold you. Can hold the grief. We've been made to a full night. But joy comes in the morning. Thank Yahweh for the life of Brother Alvin Tell Sr. For his family, for his children. We pray for you. May Yahweh keep you. We love you.
few selections we thank God with the day for those who are here, Sister Margaret, Sister Maria. Looks like I'm only dragged in the name of self. But God is good all the time. But this time we're going to be favored. I don't know if she's going to sing one or two selections, but I'm glad she's in the same mood today. Praise God with for Sister Maria. Let's give God with praise for our sister. This is Eureka Belcher, and I'll be the Hallelujah. I'll be the Hallelujah.
Let's give Yahweh another praise. Let's give him another praise. Come on, let's give him another praise. Where is that? Give him another praise. 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 Give For love, for little son, your ministry of help step through the years. It's the rock, thousands upon thousands, and we thank God for her today. Praise you, God.
awesome day. Yes. We have a good time. him for what he's going to do. I'm thankful today for this opportunity to stand again behind this roster and praise Yahweh for the last couple of weeks of having 
The word brought forth from associate brothers here at the assembly, Elder Daniel Belcher and Minister Eric Butler, praise Yahweh for those dynamic sermons. Looking forward in the future to having a word given to us by Associate Elder Ronald Green. Yahweh Barak him and strengthen him to be with us. He's a little under the weather this morning. He and the family we pray. The Yahweh will touch and continue to Barak the Green family. Praise Yahweh for them, for their service, and for their love and for the dedication to the body of the Kohal. Today, beloved, we want to be brief and certainly we want to get to our communion service today. Thank Yahweh for another opportunity. The month of August is moving on, just came in and is already seemed to be moving pretty fast. So happy to have those who are in attendance today. Praise Yahweh for you and for your love and support of the assembly and the ministry. Praise Yahweh again for those who are on Zoom today. May Yahweh barack you and strengthen you and give you continued encouragement that he will strengthen you in your endeavors. As this week moves forward, that Yahweh will strengthen and give heed to all of your situation, all that you may encounter. Today, beloved, I'm going to deal with a subject that I may have spoke on in the past, but it's a subject that I think sometimes we forget to really understand. Mm -hmm. It's not our will. Come on. Hallelujah. But Hallelujah. Yahweh's will be done. That's right. Hallelujah. I often ask the question as I'm going through personally right now with my own best friend on earth. Love of my life, mm -hmm. Sister Margaret Whitmer, mm -hmm. and dealing with all that she's dealing with right now. Praying earnestly for healing and for Yahweh's intervention. Yahweh had to point me to passages of scripture. I quote them just like you, and I'm human, just like you. And oftentimes when Yahweh is dealing with his vessels and he's trying to get a message across and he's trying to get the understanding across, we have confidence in Yahweh. All of us do. We trust him, we believe him, we put our whole heart and confidence in him. But I think sometimes as believers and reading scripture and certainly what has been shared both from the pulpit and in readings down through the years and generations that we forget oftentimes why healing came to the earth. And you ask the question, because I've asked this question many times as I get into my message today. Why is it that Yahweh doesn't heal everybody? Why is it that even in the path of all the apostles, they touched a lot of people during their ministry and a lot of them were healed? Even the great, awesome apostle of the Gentile nation Yahweh chose not even to heal Shaul. He gave him a thorn in his flesh. Paul, as we know it, the Gentile name Shaul from the Hebrew, pleaded with Yahweh three times, on three occasions, asking Yahweh to remove the thorn. You would have thought that Yahweh would have heed to his request. Mm -hmm. Here's a man who was raised up under the Mosaic teaching. 
a student of the law, an ambassador to the Gentile nation, whose ministry spanned three quarters of the New Testament as we know it today. No other writer in the New Covenant contributed to the Word as much as Shaul. The books of Matthias, John, Mark, Luke, and John, all together, done come close to all of the books of all the cities, assemblies that Yeshua set up all through Asia Minor. The Book of Romans, the Book of Corinthians, the Book of Ephesians, the Book of Galatians. The book of Thessalonians, the book of Colossians, the book of First and Second Timothy, Titus, and I could go on and on and on. Shaul, mm -hmm. the greatest apostle, and not taking anything from Cephas, who was given the task to be the ambassador to the Hebraic, we know as the Jewish people, but Shaul. That understanding for me, Yahweh, why did you choose not to heal Paul, Shaul, a man who wrote three quarters of your word? Did you ignore him, Yahweh? What was your purpose for not healing the apostle Paul? Confidence is what we have. It's all we got, brothers and sisters, is confidence that Yahweh will take heed to our prayers and our supplications. And certainly I have been praying earnestly around the clock for my companion. As I look at her and what she's dealing with, what she's going through. And having gone through it for eight months, rather than 24-7, one and two o'clock in the morning with my father, who would call me sometime two o'clock in the morning in pain. And I would leave my bedside and go to the house to go in and to lay hands on my dad. But he would receive some relief just having his son, his eldest son, to lay hands on him and pray for him. He would quiet down and relax there beside my mother. I would go in the day and wait for a few hours until he's rested and sleeping, and then I would leave. Unbeknownst to me, the next day, I would be taking him for his treatments. I watched this for eight months. As I look at the faithfulness of my companion, and God only has a reason for me sharing his word today. Because it's for someone to understand the whole purpose of healing. I would have asked a question this morning in Sunday school when they were talking about Tabathia, Tab Tabitha, Doctors, however you want to pronounce the name of the young lady who was brought back to life. Why was she healed? Why did Yahweh send healing to the earth? And we're going to learn some things this morning, even in our, in our presentation, that you may have never known about. But the first 2,500 years in Scripture, in the book of membership we know as Genesis, there was no healing on the earth at all. 2,500. In the book of John, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 says this in the translation, 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have toward him. Him being Yeshua HaMashiach, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Notice the scripture says, if we ask 
anything according to his will, not our will. And this is where many of us have missed it. It is not always Yahweh's will to heal a person physically. Individuals may sincerely pray truly and have faith in Yahweh, as all of us do, to be healed. It is not Yahweh's will to provide the healing all the time. And one thing we have to know, healing does come from Yahweh. Sometimes Yahweh's barakas come in other ways besides physical healing. It is always, we think, Yahweh, why am I going through this? Why do I have to deal with this? Why me? And, and often some of us will say, well, Yahweh, I escaped this, or I escaped that, or I dodged that bullet, or I dodged that. And it's not always you dodging. It's Yahweh's purpose for what he's doing. And physical healing is not always the healing that we need to look for. There's a greater healing this morning in this message. Pray for Pastor E today. The Yahweh will provide me and get this through. You know, if we think about Yahweh's will for people to be healed, everybody would be healed every time they ask Yahweh to heal. But that's not the purpose. That is not Yahweh's will. You know, you think about being healthy all your life and all of a sudden stricken with disease, terminal illness. Why? You ask the question, why? I live every day with that woman sitting there in that pew, looking at me. And I ask two questions. I see her greatness, her faith, Hallelujah. her confidence, her trust, her years of loyalty and love for Yahweh for her ministry of helps, <coughs> given to people, just a heart of love. And you think about it. Even in 2 Timothy, as I read in 4.20, Paul himself had a physical ailment that Yahweh declined to heal, 2 Corinthians 12.7. In 2 Timothy, Trophimus was sick in Malthus, one of the Greek cities, and Shaul had the power and the authority of the Ruach HaKadosh. Couldn't heal it. Could pray for it. And you know, oftentimes believers, they have a very oversimplified idea of healing. We often think that if we're sick and only just believe in Yahweh to heal us, that that's what he'll do. But the confidence that we should have is not that our will be done, Hallelujah. but that Yahweh's will be done. And oftentimes we don't know his purpose or his will for anything that happens in our life. It is also our attitude and our mindset when we are stricken with sickness and disease. Some people become very bitter. They get mad at Yahweh because of their sickness. Some people become very strong and love him even more for their confidence is so deep in Yahweh. They understand that whatever is going on, Yahweh has a purpose for everything. But it takes a degree of maturity to reach that level of understanding when your body is wrapped in pain and you can utter the words from your human frail body, Yahweh, thy will be done, Father. Not my will, but thy will be done. How do you get there? How do you get there? So oftentimes, 
As I look at that situation with Shaul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 through 9. And it says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh. A messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times he said, I pleaded with Yahweh about this, that it should leave me. But Yahweh comes back and says to me, my faith, you have the word grace, but in the original Aramaic tongue, my merited faith is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect. In weakness. Therefore will I boast of the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Yahshua may rest upon me. If you want Yahshua's favor to rest upon you, you become strong in your weakness. See, the, see the fleshly man can't understand that, that whole concept. That narrative right there is above our heads as human beings. How can I become strong in my weakness? There's a spiritual strength and there's a secular strength. And the spiritual strength very few ever experience. Yahweh wants us to understand oftentimes that in our weakness, this is where he's able to manifest, speak to our hearts and strengthen us in our walk. I'm thankful today for where we're going with this message. And I want to share a little story with you. A young lady by the name of Joni Erickson Todd struggled with this issue for a long time. And as she recounted in her book, Joni, she sought physical healing of her quadrupedia. She prayed and fully believed that Yahweh would heal her. In her own words, here's what Joni said, I certainly believed I was calling up my girlfriend saying, next time you see me, I'm going to be running up your sidewalk. Yahweh's going to heal me. This was quoted in her interview with Marvin Oleski. This was January 17, 2013. Yet Joni is still in a wheelchair today, beloved. 45 years after the accident that left her paralyzed, Yahweh had still not healed her. Yet she believed, she trusts, put her confidence in Yahweh put her confidence in Yahweh. We put our confidence in Yahweh. Yes. Yes. But how is that confidence defined in Yahweh's eyes? Her perspective is one of great faith. Yahweh may remove your suffering and that will be great cause for us to praise him. But if not, he will use it. He will use anything and everything that stands in the way of his fellowship with you. With you. Getting close to you. How many want Yahweh to be close to you? Well, be careful what you ask for. If you really want Yahweh to be close to you. So let Yahweh mold you and make you, transform you from Shekinah to Shekinah. Here's the deeper healing. Quoted from Favor to You, October 16, 2013. Some feel that Yahweh will never heal anyone miraculously today. And he still does. But if it's his will, he'll do it. Others feel that Yahweh will always heal a person if he or she 
has enough faith. All of us got faith. And you would say, well, if I got enough faith, I can be healed from this. I can be healed from that. But there's a deeper understanding here this morning in this message. But Yahweh will not be put into a box. Yahweh will not be centralized into one space. His ways are past finding out. His thoughts are not our thoughts, neither his ways our ways. Well, Yahweh, why don't you heal? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I have faith. I call upon your name, Yeshua, Hamashiach. I don't understand why you're not moving and doing what you need to do. And Yahweh says, you need to understand. It's not your will, but my will be done. We need to understand that healing, even in Scripture, as I shared with you earlier. Scripture was rare indeed. Pastor E's going to share to you why healing came to the earth and what was the purpose of healing. Who were the individuals that initiated healing to come to the earth from the beginning? For the first 2,500 years of scriptural history, beloved, there is no mention of any healing whatsoever. Then during the life of Abraham, we have a possible healing mentioned. Although it is only implied in Genesis chapter 12, verse 17, 17 through 20, here's what we do know. We have to wait until the life of Moshe, who performed a number of signs to authenticate, authenticate his authority as Yahweh's leader. See, Yahweh had to send signs in order to get man's attention. Mm -hmm. Healing is also a sign of Yahweh's presence on earth. Before that time, there was no sign of an almighty, a most high presence on earth. Yahweh had to send authentication through his leader. And remember, even in the ten plagues that were put on Egypt, Yahweh showed his authority and his power on earth through the leader of Moshe. However, the only healing associated with Moses, or Moshe as we know, is his sister Miriam. Many of you may remember the cleansing from her leprosy over in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, and verse 13 through 15. Yahweh made a covenant with man, an old covenant and a new covenant. A covenant is essentially an agreement. Yahweh had to modify and rectify his covenant all through scripture as he dealt with his creation, man. In the covenant Yahweh gave to Yisrael, we know it's Israel, there were a number of provisions he chose to regulate their lives. Listen, Catholic. Yahweh made a covenant with Yisrael. And in that covenant, he made some regulations. He made some rules. And these rules, he's going to specify that Yisrael needed to follow. Let's see if she followed them. And if she didn't follow them, what happened? There were a number of provisions to be regulated in the lives of Israel. And there is emphasis on physicality and material things in the Old Covenant. We found in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Yahweh always gives promises and he keeps them. Yahweh's promises to reward Israel faithfulness with freedom from disease. What did I just say? Freedom from disease. This is the clue to the meaning of the miracles in, the, in Scripture. Yahweh promises Yisrael. He, his, here's what he promised Yisrael. He promised Yisrael health, long life, children, flocks, corn, grapes, etc., and victory over their enemies if, if they stayed faithful to Yahweh. See what's happening here? 
Watch what happens. If they stayed faithful, at the same time, Yahweh also came back with a provision and he threatened Israel. Here's what's going to happen if you don't stay faithful. If you don't stay faithful, Yahweh threatened them with sickness, barrenness, disease, drought, famine, the loss of livestock, enemy occupation in their land. And as we look at this, as we look at this Yahweh says, here to us. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 17. But Yahweh afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you not say? Why did you say she's my sister? So that I took her to be, took her for my wife. Now, then here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him. And they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 13 to 15. And Moshe cried unto Yahweh, O Yahweh, please heal her. Talking about his sister Miriam. But Yahweh said to Moshe, If her father that but spit in her face, should she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut outside the camp seven days, and after that she may be brought back again. So Miriam was shut out the camp seven days, and the people did not set out on the march till Miriam was brought in again. And if you faithfully obey the voice of Yahweh, your mighty one, the most high, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, Deuteronomy chapter 28, Yahweh will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. He is what he's promising and telling Yeshua. And all these Barakins shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of Yahweh, your mighty one. Barak shall you be in the city and Barak shall you be in the field. Barak shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of the ground, of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of yours. This covenant that Yahweh made with Yisrael. This covenant lets us know that Yahweh had regulated regulations for us to follow. It is important to understand healing was sent to the earth as an authentication of Yahweh's authority and power, of his presence on earth. Oftentimes we get misconstrued we don't understand even the covenant. The Mosaic covenant is especially significant because in it, Yahweh promised to make Israel a kingdom of priests and set in a set aside nation. This was Yahweh's purpose for Israel, Yisrael, to make her a nation of priests, a kingdom of priests and a set-aside nation. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6 tells us this. Israel was to give, was to be the most highest light, that light that shined on the earth, to the dark world around them. That were to be a separate and called-out nation so that everyone around would know that they worshipped Yahweh, the covenant-keeping most high. The one who promised his people and then backed it up with what he said. And then showed it by signs and wonders on the earth. When his leaders spoke that something was going to happen, it happened. When the rock was stretched out across the Red Sea, the Red Sea parted. Pharaoh and his army witnessed the miraculous authentication, the presence and the power of Almighty Yahweh on earth. 
Healing is an authentication of Yahweh's presence on earth. Yahweh's healing is still on earth. Yahweh's still healing when he chooses to heal. But he, he asks us to understand healing is not what you deem it to be. It's my will to enact healing if it's my purpose. My purpose is generally far greater than what you as human beings can even think. How can one's, how can one's weakness be made strong through suffering and pain? I can tell you, I can tell you the days that I went with my father through his acute my Lord leukemia, the cancer of the bone, the pain. I didn't feel his pain. I could see his pain on his face. When I think about the blood transfusions and the platelets that he had to get in, the many needles that were stuck into his flesh. And when he was told ultimately at the beginning of the process, I was there. The doctor turned and shared with him after the exams and looking at his MRI. And she said, Bishop, roughly you have two weeks to live. My father dropped his hand in that wheelchair. He looked at me and said, son, my life is over. I share this with you because I'm telling you, Yahweh has a purpose for everything that he does. My thoughts and my speech were not reserved. I didn't have to think about it. It came out just like water out of, out of a faucet. And I turned to my father and I said, Dad, your life is not over until Yahweh says it's over. What turned to be two weeks, devastating news, was a journey of eight months. Pain, trips, treatments, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, I became familiar with all that stuff. Watching him going through that that journey. And even now, as I said, no closer than my companion who said to me now. I say to her, as I look into her eyes, and I say to the world as I'm speaking today, not that will be done, but Yahweh's will yeah. be done. Yeah. Yahweh's will. Yahweh's will. Done. The confidence that we have is that we trust in him until we die. Hallelujah. We hold on to him until he chooses to take us home. This is the confidence that we have. As the word lets us know, Israel found themselves being a set-aside nation of priests, a set-aside nation of separateness that will be a light to the world. Yahweh gave specifics that would regulate the life of Yeshua Yah. She chose to go the other way and become disobedient. As a result of all of that, Yahweh sends his son into the world and even through his prophet, Yeshua, in the 53rd chapter, it says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders, and by his stripes, we are healed. Healing comes through that ambassador that we come today to give an appreciation and a remembrance to Yahshua HaMashiach as we remember him today in mm -hmm. communion. But this covenant, this Mosaic covenant is deeper than what we know. They were to be a separate and called out nation, Yisrael, so that everyone around them would know that they worship Yahweh. You know, here's what we need to understand. The covenant keeping most high, it is significant because it is here that Yisrael received the Mosaic law that was to be a schoolmaster 
pointing the way toward the coming Mashiach, the schoolmaster, that law that was handed down, the commandments that we, we weren't able to keep, was pointing to the direction of the coming Hamashiach. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, verse 25 says this to us. The Mosaic law would reveal to people their sinfulness and their need for a savior. And it is the Mosaic law that Yahshua himself said that he did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. This is the same important point because some people get confused, many people do, by thinking that keeping the law saves people in the Old Testament. But scripture has already shown us, and it's clear, that salvation has always been by faith alone. And the promise of salvation by faith of Yahweh had made to Abraham as part of the Abrahamic covenant, which remains today in effect. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, 25 says this. So then the law was our guardian until Yahshua came in order that we might be justified by faith, but now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. We missed the boat with the law a long time ago. If you offend in one part of the law, you're guilty at all. Salvation come to do what? Free us. Salvation come to us to, to redeem us back into right standing. What confidence do you have today in Yahweh? Is Yahweh's will the sole purpose of your existence? Father, not my will, but thy will be done. How do you get to a point like that as a human being to say, Yahweh, in spite of what I'm dealing with, in spite of what I'm going through, thy will be done? Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 through verse 18 says this to us. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring, his offspring being you and I, those engrafted into the wild olive branch. It does not say, and to offspring referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring who is Yeshua HaMashiach. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterwards, does not does not annual a covenant previous ratified by the Most High so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance come by the law, it is no longer come by promise. But Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise. Yahweh fulfilled his promise. He sent Hamashiach. He sent the Savior who will bring us back into right standing. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1 through 4 says this to us. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the tr true form of these realities, it came never by the same sacrifices or offerings that are continually offered every year. Make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they have not ceased to be offered? Since the worshipers having once been cleansed would no longer have any consciousness of sin. But in these sacrifices or offerings, there is a reminder of sin every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls. The good things to come instead of the true form of these realities. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. For the bulls and the goats to take away sins. Bulls and goats don't take away sins in the new covenant. What takes away, what's take away sins now is the repentance and the forgiveness of the shed blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. So we can come to the throne boldly when we fall down and get back up. Boats, goats, and bulls don't do it today. It is the blood of the risen lamb, the blood that we come today to 
remember the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach. Being justified by Yahshua HaMashiach. When I think about his goodness, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14, but there, their minds were hardened. For this day, when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Yahshua is it going to be taken away. Is it going to be taken away? Luke chapter 22 and verse 20 says this to us. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. His blood will never lose his power. The great name Andre Crouch wrote the song as a young man. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day will never, ever lose its power. How many of you know today that the blood has not lost its power? How many of you know today that the blood is what sustains and keep you in your everyday walk? How many of you know that when the enemy comes against you like a ruined lion to seek you and devour you, you call him the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach and he's got to flee and move and get out of there. When you call him Yahshua, the blood of Yahshua is against you, Satan. I rebuke you right now by the power and authority that was in me. Yahshua said, when I gave you the royal Hakadash, I've given you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and even over the power of the enemy. Satan comes to bombard your mind to put down in your mind even when you're going through what you're going through. Yahweh wants you to understand when that doubt comes, and you hear all that negativity in your mind. And particularly at nighttime when it's quiet and in your bed and you're trying to sleep. And fiery darts are hitting you head on. Side to side, coming from all angles. Telling you this and telling you that about your body. Telling you this. Yahweh says, I got the last say something. And if my will be done, my will is going to be done. In spite of, I don't care how, I don't care how the situation may look. You may, look, you, look, you may look physically at your body and say, man, it don't look good. Mm -hmm. Y'all say, it ain't about you. Mm -hmm. It's about me. My weakness, your weakness. In your weakness, I am made strong. Yeah. Your life is a beacon. It's a representation of me. People watch you. People look at you. People see you. They see your strength. They see your confidence in me. I'm so happy when I think about in this life that we all will go through something. You know? And I think about how in the days that are coming, Yahshua is soon to return. One thing I'm confident in, I've already been told, you've been notified that Yahweh has a new home, a new body, all sickness, all pain, all of that's going to be done away with. How many are you looking forward to your new home? How many are you looking forward to reign with Yeshua? Being in that celestial kingdom we call heaven. And speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 13. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. I have this confidence today that Yahshua is our mediator. And he's the mediator of the new covenant. So that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed 
under the first covenant. Mm -hmm. We were born into sin. Oh, yeah. well, nothing we could do about it. We came into the world as a sinner. But a way of escape was made. What confidence do you have this morning? What trust do you have this morning? In spite of your situation, in spite of your circumstances, your statement, your mantra, your conviction is not my will, Yahweh, but your will be done. Have you grown to that point in your relationship with Yahweh where you can you can you can echo those thoughts? Not my will, Father, but that your will be done. See, Yahweh knows the end results. We don't wait till the battle is over. We shall not even in our circumstances because we know in the end. What? We're gonna what? Win. We're gonna win. This covenant relationship. It's a beautiful thing. So much to give him praise for. And we're living in a day now where Yahweh is asking us. Is it your will or my will? Do you understand? Where does your confidence lie today? Where are your thoughts? Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4 says this to us. He will wipe away every tear from the eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 5, which I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Just to reiterate. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by the Most High and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. The word for Greece in the Hebrew word is kola, which means sickness. The word for sorrows in the Hebrew is makah which means pain. Rafa is the word for healed, which means to heal, to mend, to cure, to make whole. One of Yahweh's most beautiful attributes is Yahweh, Rafa, the most high Yahweh who heals. First Peter chapter two, verse 24 says this to us tonight. He himself bore our sins. Here's what he gave Kepha. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the stake so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Yes. When Yahshua went to the stake that we're going to remember today in our communion, he became sin for us so that we would be made righteous to the most high in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Yahshua took stripes and was beaten for our healing as well. In physical health and emotional health, healing and health will always be ours. Let's give Yahweh a praise. Where's your confidence today? Thy will be done. Not my will, Father. But thy will be done. As we prepare for our communion, I ask that you would get your wine and your bread and prepare at this time.
As we focus today on the death, burial, and resurrection of our city, I just want to share. Realize that over 2,000 years ago, he walked this earth, came as the Word wrapped in flesh. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word became flesh and walked among us. Yes. The Word shows up and showed us the path in which we should take. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised and other peace. Stripes by his stripes we are here. Today we come to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our city, Yahshua Hashem. But as we envision the Messiah on that city, a body brutally beaten, beyond recognition, the one who died, the one who took our sins upon us, his shoulders, who offered an escape. Thank you. 